Chief Dr. Olushegun Obasanjo, GCFR, PhD at the age of 70, for some of us who don't have the PhD yet. 80, sorry. Please be seated. Review my book in 2014 and for, of course, inviting me here today and for trying to reduce my age. Because I got my PhD at the age of 80. I don't know, and you reduce it to the age of 70. When I came here this morning, and I couldn't jump out of the car the way I used to jump out of the car, I said to Ambassador Igali, I said, it appears I'm growing old. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is simply a significant duty for me to be here in order to be able to fulfill my commitment to a sacred intergenerational responsibility. Between me and Tunji, Tunji, sit down, sit down, because I don't want trouble with your weight. <laughs> there is an entire generational span which significance can be properly understood in terms of the value that mentorship can add to the understanding of how the public service can serve as the backbone of the emergence of a developmental state in Nigeria. Antunji has been courageous, courageously forging ahead as an expert insider bureaucrat through the trenches of sustained administrative reforms of the Nigeria since 1988, and most especially between 1999 and 2007, when the administration I led in my second incarnation was on the saddle. My deep insight about the operational logic of, of the bureaucracy derives first from my military background. And by the time I resumed as president in a democratic dispensation in 1999, I was already convinced from my rich experience in governance about the great benefits a focused government could derive from a, capa a capability-ready and professionalized civil service deployed to the imperatives of democratic governance. And so it became axiomatic for me that once I could get the reform of the public service right, the job of achieving good governance was already half done. It was therefore easy for me to set the task of achieving a deep-seated systemic change and reorientation in place 
by first allowing the civil service to jumpstart its own self-introspection on how the public service reform strategy could be crafted. One of the first things, and I think some of you who are here will remember, one of the first things that I did was to organize a week-long seminar for senior civil servants within the first week of my coming into office. It was unusual and to some civil servants also unwelcome. For me, we must all be reform conscious and sensitive for the government I wanted to lead. Professor Adebayo Adedeji of Economic Commission for Africa, UCA, prepared the program and led the seminar. And I was present for most of the program. After one week, the senior civil servants who come back to say that, I quote, we are now in a new way of doing business. And we were then all geared to move to move ahead, full steam ahead. I was, it was in the heat of this whole process that Professors Adebayo Adedeji and Akin Mabogunje brought to my knowledge the presence of a young and knowledgeable expert bureaucrat in the Federal Ministry of Education with a portfolio of experience and research understanding of public service reform and policy professionalism, which could add immense value to our reform program. And this was the beginning of my relationship with Professor Tunji Alaokwa. Starting with the deployment of his expertise which made a world of difference in the reform program of my, of my administration, especially in the formulation of the national strategy for public service reform, as uh, the chairman referred to. And it is not surprising that he went on to reach the zenith of his professional career as a permanent secretary. I was following his career even when I was out of office. Unfortunately, it is still very difficult, despite the numerous efforts put into rehabilitating the public service to get the system into a capability readiness that will transform it into a world-class institution that backstop the effort of an incoming administration. And this is where Professor Lakba's intellectual memoir the ending quest for reform not only takes the discourse on documenting professional experience to a new level, but also furnishes an entire generation of civil and public servants with a package of ideas, models, and paradigms by which to comprehend the reform framework of the Nigerian public service. My key takeaway from the memoir is the admixture 
or preside diagnosis of Nigeria's administrative predicament and the meticulous analysis of what needs to be done. I am particularly attentive to the productivity paradigm that underlines the imperative of performance management. The workforce need to become efficient. And lastly, no one can miss the abundant and patriotic optimism that flows from the entire Mengwa. Faith in the omnipotent power of God and hope that Nigeria can indeed be transformed. Let me digress a little bit here. Part of transformation that the chairman of this occasion didn't mention was what he and I undertook to transform the militants in the um, the Niger Delta. And it caused me some anxiety. Because I will send him to the boys, I call them naughty boys, in the creeks. And I will expect him to be back at three or four o'clock. He will not be back and I will not hear from him. Then he will probably be back at 8 p.m. or even sometime the following day. And I will say what happened. That he was arrested and he was told to go to Obasanjo and bring money. And he will say Obasanjo has no money. And then they will say you will be living here until Obasanjo can send us money. And Obasanjo will not send money. And after they have abused him, at times even beat him up, and they will go back, they will say, go back to Obasanjo and tell him that he should send us money. Of course, we started the process of reforming them, and to some extent, we even achieved some success. Let me come back to Njolawa. Let me suggest three ideas that I think can enrich the direction of the conversation here today. One, given what we saw during the elections, Nigeria is now even more divided and more corroded than we thought. This places a deep onus on any administration following the current one to urgently facilitate the process of national moral rearmament and national reconciliation that the potential to enhance healing for aggrieved and bereaved persons across Nigeria and to assuage the youth. This must be done in sync with the imperative of national value reorientation that Nigeria requires to build a collective sense of enduring and noble values and national belonging. Two, governance in Nigeria now calls for thinking outside the box in terms of development financing. These have become inevitable in the face of Nigeria's dwindling fortune in all revenue, Nigeria's huge foreign indebtedness, and the urgency of diversifying Nigeria's monocultural economy. 
We cannot be spending like drunken sailors on frivolities and corruption and expect development and growth. Such situation cannot take us into the fourth industrial revolution already underway or prepare us for the fifth. My experience and understanding, however, is that the money to develop and grow our economy is out there. If we provide conducive environment for it to come and stay. Three, political will, political action, and administrative efforts must be invested on reforming the public service into a capacity ready, into a capability ready institution that could enable Nigeria's development agenda beyond 2023. All these and more are necessary to correct and not to repeat the sickening and painful show of shame which the elections of 2023 generated into. Let me conclude by stating clearly that I am now too old to keep quiet and watch Nigeria seemingly clueless launch into a dystopia. All efforts are now required from all well-meaning and committed patriots to rescue the nation from the precipice. And when I look at the audience, I have a feeling that among the people who can do it and who must do it are some of you here. And that, becomes, and that becomes my own personal obligation to continue in my relentless service as letterman, dedicated in my twilight, twilight years to saying the truth as I see it so as to push Nigeria in the direction of our collective aspirations. And what is our collective aspiration? Or what are our collective aspirations? A better society where all Nigerians can become what the Almighty God has destined them to be. At times like this, some of us have to adopt the attitude of being known to be blind and not being afraid of the dark. But we must continually work for the light for all. Once again, I congratulate you, Tunji, for your continuing labor on behalf of the Nigerian Public Service and most importantly, for adding this significant intellectual memoir to your huge corpus of publications and to the annals of administrative reforms in Nigeria at a defining and auspicious moment like this. This memoir must find its way into all federal and state ministries, as well as the national libraries in Nigeria. Of course, it must become one item in the fundamental reading list for all serious-minded Nigerian development workers 
public managers, policy makers, development theorists and planners, and administrative scholars. I want to sincere, uh, I want to sincerely appreciate Patrick. Where is he? Oh, it's when I get uh, when I call you, you are going to the chairman. Listen to me. I say I want to sincerely appreciate you and next year and the Baden School of Government and Poli uh, Public Policy for putting this event together. I really appreciate your effort. And for inviting me to participate, even though I'm getting old. May God bless you all and bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.